It's been two weeks now since the first major Chinese spy balloon was spotted and photographed by a civilian setting off a series of events. That is just about everyone, even those that make fun of conspiracy theories, asking what's really going on. Meanwhile, we will get to the outgoing fallout from the train derailment in Ohio, and I know a lot of you think these objects shot down are designed to be a distraction, but come on. Just think about it for that for a second. How does the Chinese spy balloon or any of these objects shot down make the Biden administration look good? It doesn't. In fact, it makes them all look like fools, feckless fools. And wouldn't they try to make a distraction where they would come out with higher approval numbers from the public? That would make sense. Making themselves look helpless. You have reached not, the not a great, time for minutes not a great plan. Your message. This is not one of those situations. In fact, the Biden administration is scrambling to find any positive spin at all around this. John Kirby tried placing the blame all on President Trump, of course, just like the Biden administration tried to do with the economy, inflation, the wide open border, and, of course, Afghanistan. Listen to this. We were able to determine that China has a high altitude balloon program for intelligence collection that's connected to the People's Liberation Army. It was operating during the previous administration, but they did not detect it. We detected it. We tracked it. And we have been carefully studying it to learn as much as we can. We know that these PRC surveillance balloons have crossed over dozens of countries on multiple continents around the world, including some of our closest allies and partners. We assessed that at this time, these balloons have provided limited additive capabilities to the PRC's other intelligence platforms used over the United States. But in the future, if the PRC continues to advance this technology, it certainly could become more valuable to them. You see how this is going? The Biden administration is trying to spin as a win the fact they detected the balloon, even though civilians can see it clear as day in the sky. They're also trying to justify letting the balloon collect intelligence on at least three nuclear sites, none of which is good information or a good look for the administration. I don't believe this is simply a distraction because the Biden administration would rather this just go away. And at least yesterday, there were no additional objects being detected and shot down by the United States military using fighter jets to neutralize these objects. There are also just about no new answers or facts released about what the last three flying objects actually were, what kind of payloads they're carrying, or what kind of danger they may have posed, if any at all, or what kind of danger they could have led to. What's going on? For his part, President Joe Biden doesn't seem to think there's any significance at all, not to the first balloon, for sure, which is strange because John Kirby from the Pentagon is telling anyone that will listen that the president is on top of the situation and very much focused on everything that is happening. But maybe you should decide. Because he apparently sat down for an interview on Friday that nobody really knew about and tried to answer a few very simple questions about the first balloon that floated over a dozen states and too many sensitive military sites to imagine before finally being taken down by an F-16 over the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of South Carolina. Listen to this from the president. Wasn't it a, a major bre security breach for the United States, just the fact that the balloon came into the airspace no. and flew over the country for so many days? No, look... <laughs> The total amount of uh, intelligence gathering that's going on by every country around the world is overwhelming. And the idea that a balloon could traverse, uh, break American airspace is, uh, anyway, it's, it's not a major breach. What's he talking about? I mean, seriously, by definition, the balloon did breach our airspace and then stayed there. And we let it collect data on three sensitive nuclear sites. How is that not considered a major breach in the president's mind? Because to everybody else, clearly it is. That kind of weak, ineffectual response is not only irritating to most red-blooded Americans. It is wearing thin with Democrats and Republicans alike because it doesn't appear President Biden is taking this aerial invasion seriously at all. Even though his handlers say he is. But the answers coming from the administration are thin, to be polite. And frankly, not believable, to be honest. John Kirby, for example, has not revealed what's been recovered from the first spy balloon. Not yet. Listen. Has the payload been recovered from South Carolina yet? The, the large so-called payload that's... Yeah, as I said, some of the debris, certainly uh, they were able to take things off the surface like the next day, actually that afternoon, uh, some of the balloon uh, fabric. Um, and 
in the days since, they have been able to recover some, not all, uh, of the payload that sank to the bottom of the Atlantic. It's in about 45 feet of water. Weather conditions are pretty tough off the coast right now. Like today, for instance, they have not been able to get into the water and dive on it. But over the course of the weekend, they were able to raise some of the debris, including uh, some of the electronics and, and, uh, uh, and some of the structure. And that is the kind of answer that has members of Congress on both sides of the aisle saying, we have a problem here. We need clarity and, classific- and clarification, that is, on what is really going on right now with our national security. Montana Congressman Ryan Zinke, for example, says the failures of the commander-in-chief are many, and that's true. I mean, listen to this guy. <laughs> anyway, because he can't even finish a thought. Listen to this. But at some point, doesn't the commander-in-chief have to say something about the fact that we're taking hostile action against unidentified flying objects over America? Well, absolutely. And you need to be truthful about it. The truth is China is poking us in the eye. The truth is we have to respond. The truth is if we're weak, this is what happens. And look, balloons are serious. Is that There's a lot of things that can be attached to a balloon. Uh, electronic magnetic pulses, for instance. You see chemicals. There's a lot of things that can uh, be attached to the balloons. So we need to take it serious. And I'm glad at least we're taking the shot. We should have took the shot in the first balloon right away. At least we're taking the shot. I don't agree over over water because it's hard to recover. But we need to take the shot, defend our airspace, and we need to do it strongly. Another part of the conversation is what exactly is the policy of the United States? Which is a very fair question considering the first balloon spent days in American airspace and traveled over a dozen states before getting ventilated over the Atlantic. But it's not clear from anyone in Washington right now that we have a clear or coherent policy, not based on the answers that are forthcoming. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says each unidentified object will be evaluated on the facts of each case. Even though right now it sounds a lot more like shoot a $600,000 missile first and then ask questions later. Listen to this. Our policy hasn't changed. Uh, We will evaluate each and every uh event on, on its own merits, and we'll make uh, decisions uh, based upon the recommendations of uh, the Nor- NORTHCOM NORAD commander, uh, the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, uh, and uh, they'll make recommendations to me, and I'll evaluate and make recommendations to the president. Again, these three events, uh, presented a, each of them presented a risk to safety of, of flight, uh, and we don't know if they were actually collecting intelligence, but because of the route that they took, uh, out of an abundance of caution, we want to make sure that we have the ability to examine what these things are and p- potentially what they were doing. Austin continued, without giving really any more information at all, here's what he added. Mr. Secretary, have you been able to recover any part of the most recent three objects? And why continue to call them objects? Are these not balloons? Well, uh, we're going to confirm what they are once we have collected the debris. But to answer your question, uh, we've not recovered any debris from the three most recent shoot And for many, that is just unacceptable because nobody is leveling with any of us. I mean, we know that large sections of the first balloon have now been recovered and brought to the surface. And yet we are still being kept in the dark about what was on board. What kind of payload were these balloons carrying? Fourth one shot down over Lake Huron on Sunday was in open water, fresh water, still nothing. So I'm calling BS on that line of crap. They would easily have secured that wreckage. They should have, I would think. And because it's fresh water, it will be in far better shape than the one that fell into the ocean. And yet, they keep saying, oh, no idea. John Kirby continued to instill a sense of, we have no idea what's going on, too, with the flying objects or what they are. What are we, shooting down weather balloons for sport? Listen. Any of these three objects were surveilling we couldn't rule that out and so there you know you you want to err on the side of safety here in terms of protecting our national security interests and the fact that these objects uh, could have and uh, and likely did at some point in their path uh, transit over you know potential military sites of ours or sensitive sites so no folks this isn't a distraction this is serious with much more seriousness than the Biden administration would have you believe. The stuff about aliens is ridiculous, but the fact that the United States military cannot identify some of these things, just scary. You've got cameras on my phone that can give pictures in great detail. What do you think the U.S. military has on the front of those jets? If they just aren't telling us what they are, then 
They know it's something bad. Either way you look at it, we're in trouble here. The Biden administration is to blame.